Welcome back everybody, Dan here for Sim Racing Source. Thanks so much for joining in for today's video. So finally today I am doing the AO Logs handbrake review. So last year I did a review on the AO Logs Project Sequential Shifter. And if you remember, you should recall that I was absolutely amazed with the build quality and the performance of that thing. It was fantastic. Um, in that video, I actually made the statement that um, it was one of the highest quality sim racing products I had ever used. Uh, and honestly, that still remains true today. So it should really come as no surprise that when the guys over at AL Logs reached out to me and asked me if I wanted them to send me a handbrake to review, I absolutely jumped at that opportunity without hesitation. Now, I do want to take a minute here and make it very clear that while they are not paying me to make this video, they did send me the handbrake for free in exchange for this review. But just as usual, you are absolutely going to get my honest and personal views on what I am reviewing here. So I am going to be giving you my honest views on this handbrake. If you do end up wanting this handbrake and you want to purchase one for yourself, you can find this as well as their sequential shifter on the AO Logs Project website, which I will link in the video description below. And if you're wanting to pull the trigger on the handbrake at the time of this video, it is 165 US dollars. So with that clerical work out of the way, let's actually get into talking about the handbrake. So there are no surprises here, guys. Just as the sequential shifter was awesome, this handbrake is fantastic as well. On the outside, it appears to be nearly identical to its counterpart shifter. Just like the shifter, the bottom plate and all the sides are made of a very high quality thick steel and that steel absolutely, or the build quality absolutely screams industrial strength and quality. So on the front, you will find that beautiful AO Logs logo. I'm not sure what it is about that logo, but it is so freaking cool. I am very envious and jealous of that logo for some reason, but it is really cool and it looks great on the front of their products. And on the top, you're going to find a clear plastic panel that actually allows you to see inside to the complex shaft and bearing system that makes up the heart of this beautiful handbrake. And just like I thought with the shifter, this is a super cool feature because it allows you to see inside to the inner workings and you can actually watch exactly how the mechanics are working inside as you're using it. And that to me is just really cool. I also said that in the sequential shifter review and really guys, that is a really cool thing. I'm not really sure of many of the products that actually let you see the inside of their product. Most people quote unquote, try to hide that stuff. AO Logs does not. The cool thing about that is it just really shows that AO Logs as a company, they are super proud of what they have designed and they are super proud of what they have built. And not that it is even needed Needed, but just as an extra little touch or some additional cool factor, just like the sequential shifter here on the handbrake, they have added that adjustable lighting effect deal on the inside where you can kind of change the colors. Um, and yeah, and so like I said, it's not really needed, but it is an extra little touch that kind of adds a nice cherry on top of an already wicked looking handbrake. So I'll go a little further into the build of this thing. So screwed into the main bearing system inside and protruding through that clear plastic cover I was referring to, you're going to find the main shaft. Um, it does appear that it is the main shaft that's used on the shifter, and I do believe that they are interchangeable if for some reason you needed to do that. Um, but the difference here is that the handbrake utilizes a handle that is roughly twice as long as the shift knob that's found on the shifter. So this gives the handbrake lever an overall length of uh, six and a half inches roughly total. 
So this is not going to be um, the longest handle on a handbrake on the market. In fact, this is going to be significantly shorter than all of the other ones that I have personally looked at. But I believe that this is an intentional design choice, and it's part of what gives this handbrake its compact size. And in fact, one of my biggest pros about this handbrake is, in fact, the size of it. So this relatively small size of both their handbrake and their shifter, it allows me to mount them in a way that I can mount them along with my H-pattern shifter. And it's, it's very compact and very comfortable to use. So there's no extended reach to reach any of my peripherals. And the really important thing is they don't take a lot of room up on my already crammed cockpit. You guys know that have cockpits yourself, once you start mounting things on there, it can get very cramped quickly. So it's nice to have these small options that still feel like a solid quality build. So like I said, it's very small size is actually a huge plus for me. And by the way, guys, don't let the small size fool you. This little thing packs a huge punch from its small package. That's what she said. <laughs> So now I want to touch on the handbrake travel distance for a few minutes. On a personal level, this handbrake does check all of my very important boxes, including this one, but I do have to mention this. If there was any area where I could potentially find an issue that people may not like, and the people I'm referring to here is a very small percentage of hardcore enthusiasts, this is probably where that issue would be. So at the top of the handbrake lever, when I measured the total travel distance, it's roughly two and a half to three inches of travel. So that is going to be significantly less travel than any other option available in our market in sim racing for handbrakes. For me, it's perfectly acceptable, but I could see, and I have to be honest that, you know, I could see where some people may prefer a longer travel distance, especially if you used a handbrake to do uh, something along the lines of like a lot of drifting. Now, I'm not very good at drifting, so I don't do a lot of it. So I could be wrong on that. But let me just say that for me, it's perfectly acceptable. But I could see that where that may kind of be an issue for some people. But what you do got to keep in mind is that the main shaft in this thing is removable. It does use a standard thread pattern. So you could potentially remove it and find a longer shaft or make a longer shaft or find a longer handle possibly. And that would increase the travel distance at the top pretty significantly, depending on how how long the shaft and handle was that you actually used. And it's kind of the same story here with the feel of pulling back on the handbrake. While it is a progressive feel, and you can definitely feel that the handbrake does get stiffer the further you pull it back, it's not hugely noticeable that it's progressive, it's kind of light. Um, so it feels really good for very quick pulls, you know, quick stabs at the handbrake, like stuff you would do in a rally type setting. Um, but if you're going to be holding it back for extended periods of time, you may start to notice that it has or, or it lacks a little bit of stiffness that you may want. Again, that's going to be a personal preference. I think most people would find it perfectly acceptable and it's definitely not a deal breaker for myself. So personally, I think the thing is a really great and it would be a perfect uh, or just a great handbrake choice for daily use on any rig. So now let's talk about what comes in the box. So firstly in the box, you will find the handbrake base. Now the handbrake base comes out of the box assembled with literally the most sturdy tabletop clamp I have ever seen on any sim racing product. And I'm not even kidding about that. I'm not being funny and I'm not making it up. This thing is ridiculously sturdy and it's actually the exact same one that came with the sequential shifter. So if you needed to, for some reason, I think that you could uh, swap those out and use them, you know, interchangeably. I'm not sure why you would, but I figured I'd mention that you could. But if you do not want to use the tabletop mount, there is also an additional mounting bracket included that can be used to hard mount the handbrake in a traditional sense to any T-slot profile or any other similar high-end style rig. Uh, and also in the box, you're going to find the main shaft that I talked about earlier, a long handle, a USB cable, and uh, two rubber gaskets that will help with noise reduction. So the handbrake actually comes mostly assembled and there's not a whole lot you have to do other than unpack it and put a few things together. You screw on the main shaft, uh, screw on the handle, pick your preferred mounting bracket, set that mounting bracket up, 
on your rig and then plug in the USB cable and you'll be ready to go racing. For compatibility, this handbrake is plug and play on the PC via USB cable, but it can actually also be compatible with Xbox One and a PS4 with the use of a drive hub console adapter, which I should be reviewing one of those here in the near future. So if you're interested in that, keep your eyes peeled for that. So in summary, do I recommend the AOLOGS handbrake? Absolutely, I do 150%. I highly recommend both the ALOGS handbrake and the sequential shifter. After I used the sequential shifter, I was so satisfied with their product. I was actually going to buy the handbrake anyways, but they ended up offering it to me beforehand. So either way, I was going to do a review whether they sent it to me or not. And I'm not surprised at all that the thing is fantastic. As a matter of fact, both of their items are an extremely high quality. They are some of the most quality stuff I have bolted to my rig at the moment. And I have a feeling that will stay the case for a very long time because they are really solid pieces of equipment. If you are interested in more information on their sequential shifter, please go check out my review on that one, which I did a while ago, but I will link the video for that in the description below. So thank you everyone for checking out this video. Please like the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want to get notified for more cool videos and reviews like this one. Also, please go check out our new Facebook page, www.facebook.com forward slash sim racing source and go become part of that community we have there. I share not only my own videos, but other cool videos from other content creators in our community. I also, uh, anytime I find deals or news about sim racing that you need to know about, I also share that information on that Facebook page. Hence, a source for sim racing at sim racing source. So as always guys, thanks so much for watching the video. I really, really appreciate it guys. And I will talk to you in the next video. We'll see you later.